is there an idea that maybe is a little bit smaller yeah. that you find beautiful in the space of mathematics or physics? There's, there's an idea that, you know, I kind of went, got a physics PhD and spent a lot of time learning about mathematics. And I guess it, it was embarrassing that I, I hadn't really actually understood this very simple idea um, until and kind of lear learned it when I actually started teaching math classes, which is that maybe that, that there, there, maybe there's a simple way to explain kind of the fundamental way in which algebra and geometry are connected. So you normally think of geometry as about these spaces and these points and and you think of algebra as this very abstract thing about with these abstract objects that satisfy certain kinds of relations you can multiply them and add them and do stuff but it's it's completely abstract and there's nothing geometric about it but the um the kind of really fundamental idea is uh, that unifies algebra and geometry is to th is to realize is to think when en whenever anybody gives you what you call an algebra, some abstract thing of things that you can multiply and add, that you should ask yourself, is that algebra the space of functions on some geometry? So one of the most surprising examples of this, for instance, is a, I mean, a, a standard kind of thing that seems to have nothing to do with geometry is the, um, is the, the, the integer. So then there, you can, you can multiply them and add them. It's, a, it's, it's an algebra, but the, um, it has seems to have nothing to do with geometry, but what you can it turns out. But if you ask yourself this question and ask, you know, is our integers? Can you think if somebody gives you an integer, can you think of it as a function on some space, on some geometry? And it turns out that yes, you can. And the space is the space of prime numbers. And so what you do is you just if somebody gives you an integer, you can make a function on the prime numbers by just, you know, at each prime number taking that that integer modulo that prime. So if uh, mm -hmm. if you say, I don't know, if you give given 10, you know, 10, and you ask what is its value at two, well, it's it's five times two, so mod two at zero, so it has zero, one. What, it, what, is, what is its value at three? Well, it's nine plus one, so it's it's one mod three. So it, it's, it's, it's zero at two, it's one at three, and you can kind of keep going. And so this is really kind of a, a truly fundamental idea. It's at the basis of what's called algebraic geometry, and it just links these two parts of mathematics that look completely different. And it, it's just an incredibly powerful idea, and, and so much of mathematics emerges from this kind of simple relation. So uh, you're talking about mapping from one discrete space to another. To another. So uh, um, for a second, I thought perhaps uh, mapping like a continuous space to a discrete space, like functions over a continuous space. Uh, because well, yeah, well, you can, I mean, you can take if somebody gives you a space, you can ask, you can say, well, let's let's, and and this is also this is part of the same idea. The part of the same idea is that if you try and do geometry and somebody tells you here's a space, that what you should do is you should wait to so say, wait, wait a minute, maybe I should be trying to solve this using algebra. And so if I do that, the way to start is you give me the space, I start to think about the functions of the space. Okay, so for to each point in the space, I associate a number. I can take different kinds of functions and different kinds of values, but but basically functions on a space. So what this insight is telling you is that if you're a geometer, often the way to to to, to work is to trans change your problem into algebra by changing your space. Stop thinking about your space and the points in it, and think about the functions on it. Got it. And if you're and if you're an algebraist and you th and you've got these abstract algebraic gadgets that you're multiplying and adding, say, wait a minute, are those gadgets? Can I think of them in some way as a function on a space? What would that space be, and what kind of functions would they be? And that going back and forth really brings these two completely different looking areas of mathematics together. Do you have uh, particular examples where it allowed to prove some difficult things by jumping from one to the other? Is that something that's a part of modern mathematics, where such jumps are made? Oh yeah, so this is kind of all the time. A lot, much, much of modern number theory is kind of based on this idea. But and and when you start doing this, you start to realize that you need, you know, what simple things, simple things on one side, the algebra you know, start to require you to think about the other side about geometry in a new way. You have to kind of get a more sophisticated idea about geometry, or if you start thinking about the functions on a space you may ha you may need a more sophisticated kind of algebra but um 
But in some sense, I mean, much or most of modern number theory is based upon this move to, to geometry. And um, there's also a lot of geometry and topology is also based upon, yeah, change, change. if you want to understand the topology of something, you look at the functions, you do Durham cohomology, and you get the topology. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, let me, let me ask you then the ridiculous question. You said that this idea is beautiful. Uh, can you formalize the definition of be the word beautiful? And why is this beautiful? Like, well, first, why is this beautiful? And second, um, what is beautiful? Yeah, well, I, mean, I think there are many different things you can find beautiful for different reasons. I mean, I think in, in this context, the notion of beauty, I think really is just kind of, an idea is beautiful if it packages a huge amount of kind of power and information into a, something very simple. So in some sense, you, I mean, the, the, the you can almost kind of try and measure it in the sense of, you know, what's the, what are the implications of this idea? What non-trivial things does it tell you versus, you know, how, 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 how simply can you, can you express the idea? And so, so, so the level of compression, yeah. cor, uh, what is it correlates with uh, beauty? Yeah, that's that's one one aspect of it, mm -hmm. and so you can start to tell that an idea is becoming uglier and uglier as you start kind of having to, you know, it doesn't quite do what you want, so you throw in something else to the idea, and you keep doing that until you get what you want. But that's how you know you're doing something uglier and uglier when you have to kind of keep adding in more more <laughs> more into what what was originally a fairly simple idea and making it more and more complicated to get what you want. Okay, so let's put some uh, philosophical words on the table and try to make some sense of them. One word is beauty. Another one is simplicity, as you mentioned. Another one is truth. Mm -hmm. So do you have a sense, if I give you two theories, one is simpler, one is more complicated. Do you have a sense of which one is more likely to be true to uh, capture deeply the fabric of reality, the simple one or the more complicated one? I, yeah, I think all of our evidence, what we see in the history of the subject is the, 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 the simpler one, though often it's a surprise, it's simpler in a surprising way, but um, yeah, that, that we just don't, we just, anyway, when the, the kind of best theories have been coming, coming up with are ultimately, when not properly understood, relatively simple and, uh, much, much simpler than they, you would expect them to be. Do you have a good explanation why that is? Is it just because humans want it to be that way? Are we just like ultra biased and we mm -hmm. we, we, we just kind of convince ourselves that simple is better because we find simplicity beautiful? Or is there something about at the our actual universe that uh, at the core is simple? My own belief is that there is something about a universe that is, that's simple. And as I was trying to say that, you know, there is some some kind of fundamental thing about math, physics, and physics and all this, all this picture, which is um, which which is in some sense simple. I mean, it's true that you know it, it. It's of course true that you know our minds have certain have are very limited and can certainly do certain things and not others. So it it's it, it's in principle possible that there's some great insight. In, there are a lot of insights into the way the world works, which is aren't accessible to us because that's not the way our minds work. We don't and that what we're seeing this kind of simplicity is just because that's all we ever have any hope of seeing.